Yeah, hi. I'm really sorry for the technical glitch. We'll just wait and see uh, one or two other people will join in and then we'll... Yeah, sorry guys. I'm really sorry for the technical glitch that happened. I'm really sorry. So we'll start. I'll start sharing my screen. Just a second. Uh, I would say after attending this session, uh, I am already providing you whatever is necessary and required from EPW. I will tell you that um, after, uh, you know, going through and researching at least uh, a total months, two months, three months EPW and then, you know, kind of sorting through which article is important, important themes, uh, then I try to bring and I would say that only maybe one or two or three are important so I don't think it's even needed because it's there's too much of you know you'll waste a lot of time Hello. Please enable screen sharing. I am going to give you a host. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, Just a second. Can you see my screen, everybody? Can you yes. see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, we have already covered these topics and uh, we were doing with, we were dealing with the issue of missing children. Uh, so this report came out in EPW and someone was asking is reading EPW important? I will not suggest. That's why we are bringing it in crisp form. This is a combination of EPW, your Indian Express opinion, explain page, your Hindu editorials, everything. So it's not uh, required. Uh, I would uh, request everyone to kindly join with your, uh, you know, your original name. There is someone with police department MS. What's your name? If you if you please join with your original your actual names, then that would be good. Shivani. Okay. Okay. So uh, for those who who join just now. We have already covered a lot of topics and now we are dealing with the issue of missing children. So this report came out in EPW as I was saying that there is a lot of children who are who are considered there's a India has a large burden of missing children. So you can directly use when you are answering questions related to problems of children in India or problems of trafficking, that India has a huge burden of missing children and use this 
these terminologies because these are approved by world bank or other organizations of the un or in judgments of the supreme court or something uh and the bachpan bachao andolan of kailash satyarthi they are actually working on these areas so and this was a news because recently uh, a lady police officer of the delhi police she was given a uh, promotion and she was given a uh, uh, you know she was lauded applauded for her efforts in bringing back retrieving 75 missing children in only 2.5 months uh abhi to uh, filhal i am using the english but i will uh, isko main hindi mein explain kar dungi so uh, isko uh, matlab tum suno if you can understand english you can understand english i guess shivani तो ये एक्चुअली हम लोग टॉपिक वाइज जो लास्ट एक महीने के लिए इम्पोर्ट uh, एक महीने में न्यूज में था वैसे थीमेटिक uh, एक अप्रोच uh, uh, से हम लोग चल रहे हैं सो दिस इज अबाउट मिसिंग चिल्ड्रन नाउ मिसिंग चिल्ड्रन अभी uh, देखो ये जो टर्मिनोलॉजीज है ये सब तो आई विल मोस्टली बी यूजिंग इंग्लिश फॉर दैट I don't know the terminology of missing children in Hindi, so for that you have to excuse me. Uh, apart from that, these are, uh, मतलब these things they are cover all these major uh, magazines and everything. So, um, so uh, coming back, you you have these uh, that they have been frowned from a lot of areas according to Outlook. and missing children as i was explaining that there are three categories of missing children first those who have been reported that these people are missing there has been f there have been fires who are have been filed and they are not found they are they are mostly victims of trafficking and as i was speaking in the last class that most of them are women because they are trafficked to these uh, middle eastern countries or uh, other you know more, many of them are trafficked to bangladesh and india has a you know very uh, huge market for these child brides i think the other day i was saying that india has a huge market for child brides so these many of these women are they they become child brides and later on they are sold off to brothels so you can add these dimensions uh apart from that the other category of missing children are who they were missing they are found now their parents are not traceable for example uh they are put in homes for example the child has run away with someone or something and now the uh, parents don't want the child back or something there are incidences of honor killing or the uh, or the owner of a of a family is related to the owner uh, like the owner of the family is tied to you know the co conduct of the child or uh, the daughter say the daughter has run away with someone and now um, she has been found maybe she has there there's this problem with uh, you know maybe inter religion or inter caste the upper caste uh, dog, girl has run away with a dalit boy and you can add these examples and then they don't claim their family say that i don't want to take her back then such kind of women are put into homes and you have a lot of uh, news coming up that there is sexual assault or all these things in bihar there was an issue where these women were allegedly sexually har harassed these women who are kept in these uh, homes and uh, they were subject to some kind of sexual torture or maybe some girl who uh, has been found or maybe she has she has lost her mental stability or mental balance and she cannot say where her where her uh, parents stay or something so this she is put in a mental home so that is the second category where the person is found but the person who is who has been found and her parents they cannot be united parents or guardian or whoever third category are children who are mostly orphans maybe they uh, the mother has died 
maybe while giving birth to her daughter of a rag picker or someone or these uh, you know these mad people people who are lunatics who go around on the on the road and she is born to a lunatic please stop this music and stop your video please whoever you are <laughs> guys uh, such kind of behavior is ju uh, is just not be to will just not be tolerated so if you guys are upsc aspirants you know, you guys are going to become ias officers of future so such kind of behavior is just not tolerated so yeah i have removed him uh it's it's kind of shocking that uh, the we whatever we have posted we have posted on our registered uh, on our particular telegram groups which is meant for upsc aspirants and whoever has joined is joined from that that link that was posted in a group and you have such kind of people in uh, upsc groups it's it, it's really shocking for me shocking revelation for me anyways so at the third category uh, as i have said that there is nobody to claim them and they don't have record also there is no record of these children in uh, anywhere no one reports them missing maybe just a child sleeping on a park bench or something like that so these are the three categories of missing children and world bank says that you can use this as a as a cause that just because children are very vulnerable they can be easily molded that's why there is a huge demand for young children in trafficking they are trafficked for a lot of purposes not only for you know for sexual trafficking sometimes you have these young soldiers they act as human shields these children are put in the front line so whenever these whenever you you have these you'll see in videos like uh when in these taliban camps and all these things these young children are trained and they also act as human shields when you put children in front the, the other side cannot uh, they cannot violate the norms of uh, you know the the covenants of war the internationally agreed covenants of war and they cannot attack children because you cannot attack women and children and when you don't do that so they uh, from back these people can be easily attacked so uh, these children are trafficked for that also they act as human shields now according to a report crime in india report so just quote names of these reports uh, ncrb has uh, registered a special chapter on missing children and they say that they have around 52000 female and out of 73 21000 male missing in 2019 so 52000 female missing in 2019 now this kind of things you can use in your conclusion with 39% of population of india being children again data is very important you can use it in your introduction there is a gap between children entitled so there is a there is a denial of entitlement or you know entitlement deficit use such keywords entitlement deficit so child protection areas being largely interlinked there is a requirement of institutional collaboration and convergence among systemic convergence the systemic convergence for example the police the ngos the civil society all of these have to conserve who are part of the system they have to uh, come together converge and uh, we also need institutional collaborations for example un and you know our governmental organizations the ministries so you can use such kind of conclusions so in this session not only i'll give you, giving you current affairs topics we'll be covering last one month's newspaper whatever things that have been in news we'll cover epws also i'll give you some good conclusions and introductions introductions obviously you can start with reports or you can start with some kind of data conclusions i'll also give you some conclusion hacks and this actually you can use in in context of children in the context of women also that requirement of institutional collaboration and uh, systemic convergence to tackle such kind of issues now theme is obviously problems of children vulnerable section etc moving on to the next uh, 
uh, news. It is about sex ratio at birth. Now there is a study. Uh, this is again from uh, this month's EPW, from January's EPW. There a study was conducted which said that the sex ratio at birth is more skewed in urban areas than in rural areas. Generally, we have a perception. Now uh, that village, there is lack of education. And that is why uh, people will have a skewed sex ratio. That is, uh, they will always have the sun meta preference. So uh, sun will get better. Uh, they will always want, want more son than daughter. There will be sex selective abortions or there will be female infanticide, female feticide. That's why we'll always have for per 1000 male, we'll always have a lesser number of females. But here it says, this is a very alarming study, which says that this is more, it is more skewed in urban areas where obviously literacy rate is higher and there are certain uh, reasons for it. So this year's paper, you had a question, socioeconomic factors behind uh, sex ratio. So you can directly use these kind of uh, these uh, this this kind of news or this kind of data these this kind of current affairs. So socioeconomic factors we'll see. So according to the study, social factor that SC women they follow uh, these middle income uh, the other upper castes. Lower income groups follow the behavior of middle income groups, and they are developing so SCs, STs, they are considered to be more egalitarian society. So, and uh, that is why egalitarian means that they are not very gender biased compared to the higher castes. So, uh, that is why it is often felt that they will not have the sex, uh, skewed sex ratio. So, here they are emulating the behavior, uh, they are imitating the behavior of the higher castes and they are moving towards a skewed sex ratio. So uh, this is this can be related to the concept of Sanskritization. The concept of Sanskritization in M. N. Srinivas speaks where lower castes are emulating the behavior of the higher caste. So this example you can use in a, directly. Don't use it as a concept of uh, uh, in in Sanskritization, but you can use it as a reference to it, and you can say that in recent times behavior, according to studies conducted. In recent times, emulation of behavior by scheduled caste or lower caste women of upper caste show that they are moving towards a skewed sex ratio. So this is not directly an example of Sanskritization, but this is one kind of Sanskritization where you are there, they are only covering the cultural aspects to get a higher status in the society. Here they are covering, they are directly uh, copying the you know, the behavioral features to be counted among the higher, higher castes. And this is not only among SCs are copying the higher castes. This is also among, so this is something, this is a common feature that is, uh, that is, that is seen uh, parallelly among lower caste copying upper caste or lower class. For If I go by the economic uh, terminology, people who are having lower income. Lower income copying higher income. So they are trying to emulate the behavior. Uh, next, another thing says that the richest uh, quintile, the richest wealth quintile, they have the most sex uh, selective uh, abortions, according to the study by Javed and Mughal. Because they have better access. For example, a poor girl goes to, um, goes to a clinic for a sex selective abortion or something, uh, the clinic knows that this person doesn't have money. So he'll go and report to the police. But if a rich man goes to a clinic and says that I want uh, to abort the child because uh, my, my wife is carrying because, or I want to know the sex of the child uh, uh, that I am having. So the sex of the fetus, the, and I am offering you say, five lakhs or 10 lakh rupees, then the clinic will obviously take the illegal way because a lot of monetary incentive is being given. So according to this paper by Javed and Mughal, you can quote the names that well, wealthy people are having, they have better access to these means and that is why they are uh, 
they among them the sex ratio is more skewed so you can elaborate it as so, uh, uh, differentiating between social and economic reasons you can say one is means of that higher means of income uh that acts as a deterrent towards you know non skewed sex higher income actually in some cases acts as a deterrent towards uh you know uh, non skewed sex ratio or sometimes emulation of behavior that is a social factor again education plays a very important role here also there is a fallacy absolutely non educated women they don't understand the difference so there is uh so they are not they don't have much uh, you know opinion about it but as women are uh, you know having only primary and secondary education they form a kind of a male bias so according to a paper by hawari and eskura they have seen that education and sex ratio in birth have a u shaped re re relation so as education increases they have uh, you know they have a mm, they yeah. they show male preference again after a woman is very highly educated maybe doctorates or maybe masters then again they develop a form of awareness and then they don't go for uh, sexual uh, you know mm, sex determination or they don't show any kind of male bias in their uh, preference for children so you can actually quote so this is another economic reason this is education the role of education so you can uh, use it as different for uh, differentiating between as the question if i'm if i have to answer this year's question uh, socio economic factors be behind sex ratio at birth you can divide it into urban and rural or uh, you can write it as a whole and then you can write about education uh, you can write about you know these caste uh, that uh, emulation of behavior up lower caste copying upper caste middle income group copying higher income group or access economic means uh, this is another one this is a uh, you know demand side factor next exposure to mass media the more you watch television the more you watch uh, uh you are exposed to you know social media and other things there's a lot of awareness and that actually uh, changes your mindset how u shaped relation u shaped relation because initially when the person is not educated enough she is indifferent she is indifferent but then when the education education level rises her uh, she has she develops a skewed relation so she is not she is biased towards sex ratio at birth she has a preference for male again after reaching a certain up at a, at a point uh, at after reaching a certain point she again develops a certain level of awareness and then she again uh, you know this uh, this gender biasness this gender uh, you know the preference for the male child this again uh, dissipates from her mind that's why it is called a u shaped relation this is a finding of a particular paper don't if you are not using this name hawari and eskura then don't write this u shaped relation because they have quote they have taken a particular data set and they have found this relation if you don't write the names of the researchers then don't write this for this kind of statement just like that don't use it is it clear okay good also exposure to women with no exposure to media reported highest son preference this is again by a paper by bhart and xavier who says and least reported by women with full media exposure which is very obvious if you have more exposure then you are more aware if you have less exposure then you are not aware and that is why you have this skewed whatever you see around whatever you are has been you've seen uh, in your family or in the society you kind of follow that when you have sufficient exposure when you have sufficient exposure only then you kind of think otherwise and challenge the society's norms so you uh so whenever you are writing this answer urban when you are whenever you are writing say you write one factor is urbanization urbanization as a factor where people that sex ratio at birth is improving then you will uh 
there are reasons so before when you add uh, points like urbanization as a a reason behind a, an improved sex ratio at birth there will there are studies which show that it is not the case so you cannot just write umbrella points like urbanization you have to add dimensions like spread of education or something like that uh, which act as a, a positive way in influencing which positively influence sex ratio at birth so in this way you can address your answers using your uh, current affairs uh, i hope it is clear any questions anybody any questions or we'll end the session if you have any questions you can ask or anything you want any specific thing that you want me to discuss in the in the next session or something sociology strategy uh we already have a video on sociology answer writing how you can go about with answer writing what strategy are you talking uh, about your foundation strategy like have you like how to start your sociology optional shravanti oh, okay how to start with your sociology optional okay we will uh, we'll have a session on that i would suggest start with your ncrts if you don't have a background and then uh, you can go on then there are different sources like ignu and all of these that you can do we'll we'll have a session soon on youtube on how to start with sociology any other question anything or any other particular uh, thing that you want me to discuss in your next uh, class next saturdays okay any doubts i guess no doubt yes 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 you can i would still suggest start with your ncrts okay okay guys i guess there is no other no question no queries yes yes start with your ncrts and then you can go on with your source okay okay then okay guys so we'll meet next saturday and we'll be posting these sessions on youtube soon thank you